de novo, vai Cauã, fez metade, Cauãzinho, é na tua, Cauã! O tempo tá passando, Cunil, tem que correr o jogador, vai ter que voltar tudo I'm here with Goke, the coach of the Vietan. A successful map one, but it was very close. It was a 9-3 half, and it almost got away from you. Can you tell me what happened there? Basically, we lost the pistol and the bonus, and they have a composition that's very utility and ultimate based. So they were snowballing the ultimates on us. Uh, we're having good reads on them. We just needed to like play the rounds where they don't have so many ults. That's what we did. We won those rounds, and they were important rounds to win, and we got the victory with that. All right, thank you so much. Welcome back, everybody. What started out looking like a walkover turned into an absolute brawl. Leviathan triumph in map number one over Loud, but it was anything but easy. I love hearing from Leviathan's coach there talking about how util and ultimate heavy, I mean, kind of both comps were. It was either the Harbour and Gecko getting into the backside or the Brimstone Phoenix both ways. Both teams were throwing it all out there on those A hits. Yeah, but what a once famous philosopher once said, you get shot, you die. <laughs> <laughs> You get shot, you die. You get shot, you die. All right, got to do it. Got to do it justice. Sorry. I think there was a little bit more bravado. Yeah. <laughs> Vehemence, but, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but this this game, I think there was I, this game had like every single round. The spike got planted. You literally played all the way through each post plant. It was insane when it comes down to it on both apps. And I think Loud, he's right. Coach Goket is uh, about their comp. How they had so much utility, you have to really wade through it all and get through the mud, essentially, at that point. And that's why I think that comeback from Loudwood came so fast, uh, finally is able to get stopped. Is they recognized the strengths of the comp and they ended up countering. Livyatan won two rounds in a row and called a timeout of their own because they saw those ults coming up. Yeah, I love that move from them. And it was a move that they could make because they had such a lead in the first half yeah. that despite losing all those quick rounds to Loud, okay, they were still up, you know, maybe like 9-8 or so when they started stringing some... Uh, back in their favor, but it just gave them a nice amount of time to actually be able to then a buffer. Right? Yeah, they yeah. had a buffer to then get over the the early hump of okay, what are Lad actually doing with this? And then they took those timeouts, which had perfect timing on. I mean, I blinked, Bala, and <laughs> I mean, Loud had four rounds in that second half straight away. They were hitting these sites unbelievably quickly, despite a bit of a demoralizing first half. Yeah. They waste no time snapping back. Yeah, and, and then right away, Leviathan also bounced back too. Like, it was very quick. Things started to slow down finally when people realized, oh my goodness, like, this game is almost over. And, you know, those last four rounds took a long time to get through, but, like, we were still getting fast executes, and that came back real quick. I I was struggling to keep up with who was actually about to take the lead. It was such a fun game to watch. So we heard a little bit from Levitan. Let's hear from Lana what their coach had to say ahead of map number two. I'm here with Peyo from Loud. Now, that was a very close map one from what could have been very, very far. Do you think you have Leviathan figured out? É, a gente tá aqui com o Peyo. Foi um, um round bem, bem acirrado. Vocês vieram de trás, conseguiram chegar junto. Você acha que já descobriu o jogo deles? Eu acho que a gente demorou um pouquinho a entrar no jogo, mas no, na virada do Ralph a gente já tava um, é, com muito mais... É, próximo do ritmo do, do que tinha que ser jogado. Eu acho que agora na split, que a gente já tá um pouco mais aquecido, se a gente fizer bem o plano de jogo, a gente tem tudo para conseguir virar o, o mapa. Yeah, I think we started to slow, but then we caught up to, to speed. And now that we, we are um, warmed up, I think we can do a, a good job. If we, if we keep the, the mind in the game, we can do a good job in split. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, pace is absolutely one of the buzzwords for this particular map, right? Really volatile uh, showing on bind in general. As we start to turn our attention towards split, do you expect this to still be the case? Because we have data from both these teams on split. One of them looking a little bit more flattering than the other, right? Sova Breach from Leviathan, pretty unconvincing. Hundred of these kind of rolled over them. But Loud on that map looked incredibly good. Yeah, uh, I... I think Loud in, on that map showed probably their best look uh, out of everything that we've seen so far from them. It was very cohesive. It was fundamentally sound. So split here is going to be a challenge for Leviathan. I mean, you just look at the score lines and uh, that kind of tells you what you should expect. I think, for example, we just saw on Bind, that was very well prepared. That's a playground for Aspas. Tex was playing fantastic on the Gecko, but all that goes out the window when you're really trying to innovate on this new, on this next map.
Yeah, on Split, I have expectations for Loud that I think they will meet no matter what. The question <laughs> mark is just when. Are they going to be playing the same comp? Yeah. If they are playing the same comp, are they going to do a better job with it this time than they did against Under Thieves when they only got three rounds? Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Uh, and I, that Under Thieves game, I mean, they got blown out almost basically like that first half that we saw from them against uh, Loud here on Bind. It's going to be difficult. Uh, I, I think Loud did a fantastic job at really keeping the information away uh, from their opponents in that first split map. So Leviathan has to be proactive at recapturing some of that information that Loud loves to deny. And also when the, when Loud is on defense, being ready to receive some of those reclears that Loud is so proactive about. Most, one thing we saw between Loud and uh, you know their Sentinels, their previous opponent, is that Sentinels got a bunch of these random full stick defuses, right? Yeah. I feel like Heaven is a really important part of this map to watch over on that A site here because teams that have control of that can intervene yeah. before those full sticks come down and get involved. A lot of teams are opting to stay back. And if we have Solo Sky here a, a, oh, wow. again, right, uh, you know, from Leviathan, it can be hard. We talked about the flash economy. Coenzino on the breach here. So you've got much more to play with with the retake quiet. Yeah, here, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at this Lev comp. They've mixed it up. Change Obviously, it up. Calm is on Sky. They're going with double duelist look. Ospis on Jet. Tex on Raze. Tex hasn't been playing a whole lot of duels with this team, but yep. if we go back to last year when he was playing with uh, then the guard, now G2, his duelist was phenomenal. One of the reasons that that team ascended into the league. But even like K Kansas City Pioneers, Tex, like going way back, yeah, like we he, saw some insane stuff from him then. Nasty from him there, but I do like that this is like more of a comfort comp. Right? I, I talked about how there's not time to innovate and not time to implement a sofa on this map. This is the de facto comp of 2023 last year on Split. And Com was one of the team. It was on a team that was fantastic at. And I think this is an easy thing to implement that is going to bring really, really good value against the comp that Loud has picked here. Yeah, worth pointing out. Last time we saw uh, Leviathan onto this map, they were trying to make use of Cipher. Obviously, Cipher with that Sova set up there. Curious looks here from both sides. Leviathan, they've got to feel good about their setup coming in. They mix that up. Loud, we know, look dominant already on split. So we're ready. For map number two, let's set it back over to Brandon Sideshow for the call. And yeah, Lev have come in here, wiping the slate, haven't they, for Split? Remove that old comp. We were, gonna, we were really just prepping as well to come into this one. Guns blazing, talking about yeah. what improvements they might make for it. But they've decided to go back to the old drawing board, the comp that Loud popularized. Yeah. And Aspas on his home ground turf playing the jet. I mean, how many clips? Countless amounts of them. But this yeah. guy, the movement god himself, uh, he, gets to, he gets to just run loose, I think, across the, the entirety of Split. A real chance here for Lev to potentially put it away 2-0. to zero. But at the same time, Loud are going to know the exact angles Aspas likes to fight on, the way that he likes to be set up. It should be somewhat readable if Aspas is being set up in the same kind of way. Yeah. But he's on the attack side here, where he's less likely to be dominant with the operator using those movement abilities like crazy. We'll see them now. Again, it's that slow start to the round. Just teasing. This is a flash. big push down there. Oh, hello, yep. Got one. Certainly is. QCK. Hold night crossfire. I guess what? Sanak's going to be remaining there, at least for a moment. But now the call is made. Themselves into the A site. Clear it out with the boom box. It's not going to clear less. And he's inside the smoke, just dominating the angle. Here he is, one bullet left in the chamber, but no more contestion. <laughs> a ceasefire called between Aspas and Les. Back away and call their ground here, but this is really fast onto the retake. Dog Trailblazer are starting all standing. connecting. They wrapped all the way around and they were none the wiser. Mazzino, so much you can do here, son. So Even with the pull here, half of the defuse cuts it away, but they know exactly where he is and the bullets will do the job. A lovely pistol round from Loud there. The reaction to walk down mid after Leviathan take ramp control, pretty perfect. You look at the loud composition, right? We know how Lev is going to play. You do yours. But loud's comp on defense still actually needs to walk push out of areas or to force fights because they don't have that Sova. Uh, sorry, they don't have the Cypher to be able to give them constant information around the map with trips. Passive map control. Yeah. The passive information is just so powerful with the, with the Cypher and neither team have that. So both teams are going to want to fight areas more aggressively and specifically for loud trying to push QCK into aggressive angles with Initiator Utility. 
Big cool star to get them up onto the angle here for Lev. You're on QCK because he's at a slide off angle. Got the nade in his hands. Lots of targets. We'd love to grab them as well. Building up some of these ults. As soon as the first wave of utils used. Oh, that was stun. a paranoia too. So, okay, stun, paranoia, nade. Great All combo. comboed up. How are going to be using those around the map to put pressure onto Leviathan whenever they try to take map control? And with this composition, often the areas that you're fighting over somewhat obvious because Com's going to often be using the dog to indicate which areas of the map they're going towards. The danger in this round circumnavigated, isn't it? Certainly should be, unless Aspas can top some heads. It's going to be caught. Oh, wow. Even the business, Mazino. Now, Mazino was shooting bodies map one. <laughs> but I mean, louder letting them know here. They're getting personal, maybe. Possibly. There's not really too much of a rivalry, as far as I'm aware, between these two uh, teams. Like I said, Loud have only played against Leviathan twice. Both of those were two zeros in favor of Loud. Bind was the first time where King's actually been, been able to IGL a team to success against Sadak. So that's a big win on the board for Lev early. Slow and spread out here for Lev. Their attack side default. You see that Mazzino's got that star down in B main. That's great if there's some kind of aggression, but it's also really good as a pullback smoke just to deny the one way its power. Blinded. That is so deep into B main as well. Team editor's back here. Hot flash. Denied with the info. Mazzino taking another peek of it. His job is done. Really to contain that one. Kavazina has to be cleared up. Has to be cleared up. What? There's no way. Is that man? Just slips out on six health. The heals coming through from both teams. But the kill's a bit more important. We're seeing now King looking to fight an aggressive kind of lurk position over towards A ramp. And less than two he's are clearing out King's area at the same time as Lev takes some mid control. Difficult to know which is actually going to find value first. Calls being made. There were 40 seconds here. Less than two E's could get pinched here really easily, and King is out of hit. danger now. They have to hit it, surely. Dropping down, put the ropes on top. Flash through. Good connection. Great one at that. Kawazin caught up, but guess what? There's players still at ramp. Maintaining control of this one. Everybody straight to the site. It's going to put Loud in a good position to refight for that heaven control. But they've still got Mazzino super late behind. Insurance policy. Com is... Not aware. Wiser. They have Not no aware. idea that there were players over towards la ramps. They'll be thinking to himself, why didn't those guys shoot earlier? They I just hid on ramp. Right from the back here, Mazzino finally looking and reveals his hand. Now, I don't believe he's got any stars for the spike here. So, still, shut to him down. Flatline, close to the corner. That's Aspas. He's hoping that somebody just wades right into his sightline. The time. Up onto the side. Yeah, the time. Patience. Ooh. Really One holding it with the trigger remaining. disciplining. That crossfire setup is just elite. Two years. You can't work with that now. It's ticking far too fast. Got to give this one up. Maybe he can take it a gun away. Yes, he can. But still. I mean, I would consider that a great bonus round for Loud. Yes, Levy Yatan put one on the board. But look at the economy that they're working with now. It's going to be light armor with a rifle onto everybody. Yeah. And some people might not even be able to afford full utility here. Yeah, look at Com. When we come back in, he's only able to afford one flash. So even though Loud are not able to pick up the round, they've accomplished some level of their goal. Com has actually gone with a Bulldog here just so that he can afford all of that utility. And Aspas is only working with the Guardian. Early round, stun, B main control. Two trying to punish two E's. I mean, there's nothing behind that at all, is there? Right there. Just calls their bluff. Yeah, no real threat. I mean, still locking down that B main angle. Hasn't been pushed back. I think Loud, I've got one of the best callers in the game on defense. I mean, Sadak is so phenomenal at making these adjustments on the defense side of maps. And you see his game plan at the start here. They're flushing Ooh. King out with the dog, but King finds less. Why do we take it here? Out. Okay, backing away. Satchel's to <laughs> disengage. Yeah, they're trying to hunt King. I mean, he's calling for them to rotate back through mid here. 
apply some of that extra pressure, pressure as well. He's put these players all the way to him, like you said, this hunting him down. I mean, they got players in sewers. Crossfire set up QCK and Gawazina here, right behind them. They might be able to just catch us. Yes, they can. Wasn't played to patiently here, but QCK takes what he's given. And King's like a trapped animal on A. Yeah. I think, guys, please, I don't have the spike. Leave me alone. <laughs> he's corralled into the corner, finally. Spike planted. They're going to try and set themselves up here. They need to deal with King. I mean, he is becoming a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, and he's going to take tons of time off the clock. And that's one of the problems that Loud had in the previous round. Yes. Oh, my God. Footstep. Sarak, Sarak, he's like, please, just swing into me, man. I need to play with the rest of my team. And finally, okay, deals with him. But that has more time off the clock. And now the fight to be taken. Stun. It did connect. Lev have already claimed two of them. Despite those weaker guns, drop down for main Aspas. Nasty shot. He might just say, I mean, King potentially single-handedly won this round for them. I mean, Sarak, you can't go for it now. Back away. Rifle has to be saved. Holding on for a little bit too long there. But genuinely, I mean, King, he was just causing a distraction of a lifetime. Yeah, and that's the second round in a row now that he's been able to find that aggressive lurk into A. He knows that Loud are fighting over heaven and ramp control and then not putting anybody as a hard anchor on the site. He also knows that there's no cipher. I mean, that one's a given. <laughs> but but the, well, what that means is there's no trip that he has to break. No way that Loud know the timing that he's taken to be able to get into A. So Loud are yeah, now going to have to swap up their defense setup. It's a blessing to be alive. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to be alive, I said. So look, Loud now making the adjustment. Oh, oh, Bonkers okay. shot at the start of the round. But Kawantine is hard anchoring A. And King's like, all right, I did it twice. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> he's holding so far back. He's miles away. And he's actually going to potentially bait the push. Coming out of Sadak and QCK. And King oh! is tearing them to pieces. Yeah, it's a half five, but impressive nevertheless. Because again, the read is just so immaculate from yeah. King. Lev actually struggled a ton with dealing with 100 Thieves. And yeah, it was a completely different composition. But it was because 100 Thieves were fighting them so hard at the start of the rounds. I don't think this is doable, though. Oh, my God. I mean, it shouldn't be doable. Tom was falling asleep at the wheel ever so slightly. Be economical damage. That's what less time than four. And King's aim is looking so much sharper than it was in the game against 100 Thieves, too. Yeah. I mean, King was like changing his crosshair halfway through the game just to try and get his aim back on form. <laughs> and now he's just tapping people with the Phantom. Whatever works. Absolutely. Now I think it's I think it still is relevant a little bit though to compare and contrast it the way that Lev is playing. Because Loud want to do the same thing that 100 Thieves did, where they fight them on defense. They've got a comp that wants to catch Leviathan into the breach utility, flash them, attack them. But instead, King's finding these perfect moments to bait it out or bypass it. And I think Loud, again, have got to try and hold somebody in a hard anchor position A, just in case King goes for that aggro lurk. That's a big problem. Loud comp missing the fact that in the past they were running it. The double duelist, they could build Aspas, the operator on those deep angles. Don't really have the answer to that this time. Two years. But respect them. Just a jump spot for info, so he knows. Man, there's Flash. Round to the side of the pillar. I think Shake with the util. Kalanzin and QCK were hard anchoring A at the start of the round, and that makes mid and B a little weaker, right? Because those players are going to be so much further away. So Leviathan are pressuring in that kind of direction. Now they call a bit of a freeze in the mid round, trying to figure out, have they pulled rotates? Is there a possibility that some area of the map's opened up? And the spike starts traveling over to A. Is this going to be some kind of big elaborate fake with the cosmic divide? King has been known to call. Yeah, it looks pretty like excellent it. stuff. I mean, the players are set up in position. Two into main, but the spike nowhere near. You are divided. Orba, here's the cosmic divide. Trailblazer. Star into the back. It really does feel like it's going to be that B hit, but in front of the wall, that's Sada. <laughs> He's gone. Didn't stand a chance. And the rest are left. They strike them right where it hurts. The peak for reinformation. And now, A site left. entirely opened up. Two years. Spike 
to get his one. But as the last player alive, he just doesn't know where Com is. He has no information about where the, where the Levitan players are on A. This is a no-go. Yeah. What a read from you, Josh, as well. I mean, okay, guns removed. Plenty of money to buy for Lev as well. They're perfectly willing to hunt this out. <laughs> now, the big problem for Loud in this round, though, wasn't just the fake. It's that Kawanzin and QCK are there looking for information a ramp. And you might think to yourself, well, they have tons of utility to use. They should actually be able to take a fight on a ramp, but they don't know the timing. These guys are contacting forwards. Kawanzin can't just randomly start flashing around the map. Or I guess he can, but you'd have to have a, a sick read for it not just to be wasted utility. So the Gable utility survivor. advantage that Loud has with Kawanzin and Sadak playing double initiator is neutralized when Lev are running fake plays or contact plays like that. Because Loud just can't find the timing. God, lucky to be alive. And yeah, you're seeing that evidence now. Definitely building up that these sky compositions Looking a bit aged with changes. It's that mid-round information with your defensive sides. You just, you lack it so much unless you post somebody up onto a deep angle. And Loud are trying to get that mid-round information by double pushing, by having, you know, people jiggle peek. I mean, now they're using the dog to re-clear B main. They know that it's probably headed towards A. There's no stack of players waiting and the guns aren't good for Loud. Sadak is booking his way over here. Out of charges. With the Bucky. From spot left. Let's the Molly rip close. Kawazin. Bucky gaming occurring right now. TP it is! You can miss it, that! Oh, no. You have a laugh? He's sick on the line? What is going on? That is ridiculous. Still, King. <laughs> One hell of a time to take with QCK left. nade in his hands. Less than 30 seconds left now, but the players surely they can't make someone of this. Still got the full containment onto this side. In fact, a rifle in the hands of Sadak. Do you want to call for the cancel the pivot? They don't know to really just move it around. Heads on a swivel on either side, either direction. They haven't cleared this player. How the hell they made the call? Wait, surely this is too late. Melon's yes. moment may be potentially seconds. occurring. No, surely they've got enough. They clear up the stragglers. Barely, they do. Barely with two seconds left. Knowing that timing so precisely. Oh my, what is that pit? I mean, pitting in the 3v2 when you have people ready to collect the rotators as well. It is a heavy investment from Lev. I mean, what is this? Yeah, a, lot to, a lot to break down here. What is that? Look forward to the desk a bit later. What is this? But it is a one round for Lev. I mean, they had just enough time for the pivot. And I'll tell you what, King's ult is better than two eases. In that round. <laughs> That's still probably one of the most ambitious Omen TP plays I've seen. Trying to follow up on the stun, I think, from Cowan Zine. Just thinking, I mean, might That's as well. a crazy one. Yeah, I mean, just, just uh, yeah. You see an Omen TP right next to you, you don't shoot him because you're like, oh, he'll cancel. He sees four of us. Yeah. He'll cancel, right? He didn't. I gotta say, though. Uh, oh. Uh, Ask for one down. <laughs> okay. Uh <-huh. laughs> okay. Oh, the silly round. <laughs> this, was, this was this was the silly round. Yeah, the vulnerable there is really strong. But this was, was certainly the silly round. I mean, yeah. what? <laughs> that is, that is, I mean, the stun doesn't even catch onto everybody. That is oh, silly round. Oh god. Louder gonna take a timeout here. Now, to talk about what went well in that round, though, Leviathan navigated a really difficult situation beautifully. And the mid-round call to pivot to be decisive with only two seconds to spare. I mean, that's that's pretty great. But they'd already navigated that difficult spot too, right? They wanted to go into A, they got snarled up, Kawanzin got the kill with the Bucky. And then they call it off, go and take heaven, and then make the pivot. The mid-rounding from this team has been very impressive. And I got a chance to listen to the communication, and I can tell you, Com is really vocal on this team. He said it in the interview himself as well, that while he wasn't the biggest mid-rounder for EG, he was doing some of it, and now he's brought his strong experience and communication presence to Leviathan to help King, while King's are yelling in a new language. And yeah, that's, it's looking really good. This is reminiscent of the beginning of Bind. Loud win the pistol, and Lev just starts stomping. King having a worldly of a performance. Like you said, those mid-round adjustments, his individual play as well, has just been on top of it. 
haven't needed to see Asfas really just take over the game. Flash to set it up. Double satchel play, so Tex can gain that space up into Ram. Spam the bullets, avoided and have just evaded. The updraft there. Interesting angle. The updraft doesn't connect there, not with the blade storm. Into the site now. Through the back of it. Offloading the Viper's Pit. Seekers also used. Tex doesn't have a satchel, he thought he did. This pit is amazing to try to flood defend. Mazino's just stuck the plant. He's planted Seekers it now. for heaven, so yep. there's going to be a fight here over towards Ram. And they're going to rotate on each other, right? It's it's actually huge that QCK maintains some heaven control. So Sopper, though, sends it flying and caught me. was spotted earlier from the Seeker. Trade King straight in her face, rolling thunder. Collide, collision course, two years right from the back, though. And now they can try and gain that ground. Granted to them. No, not quite. They give up entirely. And Texas still maintaining it. Time ticking away. Pit going down. Sadak now with the defuse. He realized he has to get onto this one, but the pull. Mazzino from afar. He just pushes them off the defuse entirely. And Sadak trying to stick. Mazzino! It's all him, baby! Absolutely sublime! Loud had so much time pressure. And they fumble it at the end. Incredible moment from Mazzino there. If any single player had been able to shut him down, probably the defuse ends up coming through. And I think that Loud identified what was going on here quite nicely. They knew that Lev were going to be fighting over Ram, and instead of going with the pit through screens, they decided to deny heaven control entirely. But Mazzino doesn't go through heaven. He just chads his way through main, <laughs> rips off three heads, and puts Lev up to six. Here. Not a single rifle round has gone the way of Loud here. Nasty business. This Lev team are looking large and in charge. They want to take a victory. They've never had before against this Loud organization, but they are setting the stage. Loud is still going to be able to buy in this one thanks to their massive loss bonus. Silver linings. But it's a rain cloud hovering above the head of Sadak. They would have loved to get out the group cleanly. A reminder that this game, while it's not an elimination, is actually huge because of how tough this group is. Sentinels are waiting, just ready to play against watching either of these two teams. Oh yeah, you know they're watching. You're walking a tightrope and there's piranhas waiting right below you. You don't want to slip down to the lowers. A Sen team looks deadly, even though Loud yeah. have already dealt with them before. QCK is monitoring heaven. Double players anchoring from Loud. That adjustment to try to deal with King may end up helping them in this round too. Look how difficult it is for Loud to find any timing to use their util. Yeah. Finally though, there's a connection with the stun as well and it messes up the movement of takes A lot of util being used, a boatload of it. Towards the back of the map. Unless, yep, he's gonna get spammed down there. Aftershock, trying to push them back out of these positions. They haven't dealt the players anchoring to the site. The spike is down, there's only 13 seconds left here. This is a one round for Loud. It should be all in theory. There's really not enough time to work with. Off angle, QCK, crouch down and dodging and duking and just ducking out of danger. And one of the issues with Lev contacting all the way up through heaven is that they actually didn't realize that there was two players hard anchoring there. You know, that setup was almost luckily perfect to deal with what Lev went for. The Cowan scene are less in great positions to punish King if he went for the Lurk, but also to punish a heaven to sight kind of hit. They just maintain that control over elbow and screens. How loud were able to mount a comeback after getting a only a few rounds in the first half of Bind. They made it a game. There's three rounds. So, how many do they need here? Loud's comp is going to be powerful on the attack side. Out them out. At the same time, Lev have been completely in control so far. Once again, going for that contact play. I think you really need to be spamming the wall when it goes up like that. But Les is worried in case they burst onto him. At any point, this double duelist composition can go from contacting to exploding. Look at all the space. Meanwhile, Com is going to try to sell that it's on the other side of the map, I think. Oh, that's what you need. Yeah, there's the spam. Lev drops down. Les has just found another two players. Lev decide in. to engage. They're all the way in, but crouched into the corner. Karazine collects. Still here, still active, still in the fight, and snappy. The aim looking good here, loud. 
Look at what an adjustment having Kalanzine Hard Anchor has done. 30 seconds left. Oh, Loud have to be so confident to play against Lev when they have no information. But they're good for it when they're anchoring the sights. Yeah, call to save. Two remaining Lev players, and you're right. When they're anchoring in those positions, they're good for it. It actually makes such an enormous difference to the way that they're playing. Loud previously were Ten playing for left. information. They were trying to make up for the downsides of their con by hunting ramp and trying to see when Leviathan would, would fight. And now they've adjusted to basically saving all of their utility. They're like, right, okay, if you're going to contact around the map and not use any util, I guess we'll save ours, yeah. and we'll just meet you at the site. Now, King could push this another level further and start contacting into, like, spawn and that kind of stuff, and really just take as much room as Loud are possibly giving them. Wonderful timing from Les there with the orb being propped up. Just gives the extra cover for Kawazin. Four players from Loud over towards B, an Time absolutely my hard read that Lev were heading in that direction. It's not the case at all. I and mean, if Lev just decided to burst sight here, Loud have been put in a rough situation because of the gamble at the very start of the round. Yeah, they're going to have to play full retake. Get away off the sight. Interesting to see how they might just play this one, refighting. Les has already got the space up into heaven. This is pretty crucial. Planning for heaven. Control here for Loud. Now they're going to seek to potentially refight now over towards Ram. Or it's a call made by Lev. It looked like they wanted to just maybe go for this. But now, straight through elbow. That's where the players are meeting. Stun. It's nice. Shotgun right in their faces. Sadak. Gains the upgrade. Les has to control Heaven. Planted out into the open. Sadak's defusing. Order Eddie on half. And yeah, that Heaven control needs to be maintained, but it's, it's just been lost instantaneously. <laughs> the defuse is just gone. It's just stuck. Yeah. And that's the thing. When Lev plant like Last this, they're trying to refight Heaven so that they can spam, right? And if you completely deny them Heaven like this, it's the same thing we saw from Sen. It's such a great retake protocol. You have some people coming through screens. You have some people stopping the players that are trying to wrap up towards heaven. Yeah. Beautifully done. Really fast from Loud. And that's them going for the retake without any ults online as well. That's difficult. They make it look so simple, but pulling that off with the level of coordination and aggression that you need to not get caught by Lev is so tough. I thought they were giving up entirely of just trying to push them back away from heaven, but no, it's three players with the retake through Albo. Like you said, I mean, still holding on to control of that heavy control the entire time is less as a crucial component. Yeah, QCK fought it early so that they're slower to go up ramp. And then Les is hiding behind the box so that if they actually try to get the spam angle, he's got he's got eyes on them. I mean, this is a really nice adjustment from Loud. Serious mental warfare happening right now between the two IGLs. And Sadak's being tested in a way that, again, King has never tested him really in the past. But Sadak is one of the greatest IGLs in the game, especially on defense side for a reason. And he has figured out a bit of a solution to push them up to five. There's a chance that they might tie this up. And that, that seemed utterly unfathomable at like round seven or round eight. QCK investments being made. Look at that operator in his hands. This is one way to try and put a stop to this contact yeah. play star. Doesn't have an exit strategy really, not when he's playing a raise, but it should still be good. He knows that flash is coming, plays anti. He's just looking to try to punish the first person around this corner. Poetically, it would often be us, boss. Calls made to cancel. Look how much space Sadak has taken, and he has a plumbing judge in B main. <laughs> He's a menace. This is where it gets really quite tricky. And Loud were doing this kind of thing pretty regularly in their previous match. They've got no util to really clear this one here for B main either. The timing is going to be crucial right now between Mazzino and Sadak, who has more discipline, but two ease is left alone. Lovely angle. Rogers though, back towards the pillar. Pull at his feet, Sadak is going to hold his ground here. Stand tall and deliver, and there it is. Pellets to the chest, Mazzino really just toppling down into hell. A bit of a team flash, but maybe can set them back up, pushing them back and away. That is the widest face I've seen, but lovely movement by King. Now we get to see whether those retakes are looking so clean over towards B. Three players available for it. QCK's got a rifle now. 
and full utility on the breach. Bit of control there, there's a reflank attempt by QCK while all this is happening and Tex is going to be... Kawazin's looking for target. Kawazin, yeah, come for the time. No way! 180 adjustment there, fault line just lay it down, but there it is. Flank timing occurred from the back here, Com. Doubled up with the rest of his team. This is rough time. Can they even do this one? Time remaining. running shortless! <laughs> Fabulous aim from the monster Sentinel player for Loud. Oh my. The flanks on flanks. Both teams learning from Com's school Switching of always side. be flanking. <laughs> But it's QCK that actually got more value. Com had his opportunity against Kawanzin, but couldn't quite execute. What a comeback to tie this up 6 6 at the half. I did not think this was going to be possible. Doubt Sadak at your peril. Well, let's send it down to the desk to break it all down. Yeah, thank you very much, Bren. Quite a scrappy game so far, right? Leviathan being forced to play contact because their flashlight already with just the sky, and often Com is on a different part of the map. I mean, often everybody's on a different side of the map. <laughs> yeah. This game has no. been a Shakespearean tragedy, right? Like, <laughs> it is star-crossed lovers between Aspas and Loud, and it's just a comedy of errors in this first half. It's been an absolute mess. It got a little bit better. No, don't hold back. No, no, don't hold no, back. It's been, it's, <laughs> it got a little bit better towards the end, but the way things right. started, it was rough. I mean, we went into this thing, or at least I said, like, I have expectations for Loud that I know that they're going to meet. You know, thinking that, you know, there would be extremely competent gameplay throughout. But my God, rounds like this early Messy. on were so scrappy. Timing's off everywhere. Yeah. Players in the wrong positions, not able to help each other. Flanks coming in too late. Just I kept rough beginning, but a little bit of sanity for both teams. I, I kept looking at the mini map and wondering, what am I looking at? There's like six people on different sides of the map. The, the spike is planted over on A side, and there's like three people on B. Sonic is holding King for like 15 <laughs> minutes. Mazino's like, just emerged from Narnia riding Aslan to the side <laughs> of it on some kind of flank, you know what I mean? Like March of the Valkyrie style. But uh, that aside, King continues his trend from map one. He's looks fantastic well. on Bayern. He looks extremely sharp on this kind of map, but Levitan are not getting heaven control. So these post parts are always looking so awkward. Yeah, I, I think that's a huge credit to Loud though in some of these instances, right? They, they start to clean it up a little bit and they make it really difficult for Levitan to get some of those win conditions. And that's why we have a tie game at the half. They're getting a lot of forcing themselves up ramp wide. How do you feel like the second half goes now? Levitan switch sides. I... I'm going to favor Loud going into this. Still, the comp on attack, they should have explosive hits. Let's head back to our cast. It's Brennan Sideshow. Take us into the second half of Splits. A well, lot's going to be decided here. Obviously opening with the pistol round, but I mean, Loud have managed to claw their way back to that 6-6 half. And it was a little bit earlier prior, I was saying it was all left. You look at Leviathan's setup on the pistol. They have so many players in mid there. King is going to throw the orb at the start of the round and reposition over towards heaven. But they are expecting Loud to take mid control. Why is this stun line? It looks disgusting from Kawanzin. How many connections will he get onto the corner? No! They peek out. What a read. Lev more than ready for that one. Disengaged two years. He's fast onto the approach, onto the line, a side angle here. Kawanzin, though, removed. Wasn't so lucky. The spike's making its way over towards A. Listen, you thought the chaos was over. No, we're just getting started, apparently. It's on the other side of the map. Now, the player's been pulled. Lev calling for the re-clear. Down into mid, all together here. One player into spawn. I believe, Mazzino. What is this, DC? No, he's just holding. Baiting me. Yeah. I mean, he knows. He knows. And it's a sofa forwards kill. He sees it. And he claims it. Spike planted. Two E's. Really is miles away. Yeah. Narnia reference. We got it out of the way in the halftime, so can't make it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he, he's got the entire wardrobe on B. He is miles away. They rebound in two years. Got to get a move on. They're, they're watching watch for it. They just know. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, King. Mini map moment. Falling asleep. QCK. No one's watching. No one's watching. Pick and choose your timings wisely. QCK might have just done it. Bought time, time. Oh, Ticking. No kills collected. They could standing. not surely get away with this. Oh, Sheriff sure, picked up. Sure. It's not half. Have to stick it. And come denied the defuse. 
Well, at least that was a nice clean round. How the hell have they got away with that? I have no idea. No idea. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it all starts with King looking at the minimap and getting surprised by two E's on a flag he knew was coming. <laughs> Bala was pissed as well, headed into the halftime. He was. Well, he's well, going to be watching this with his head in his hands, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Because while it's a cool call from Loud to turn that failed B hit into a, a into a fake, less being caught should absolutely signal the end. Leviathan are going to fight over B main at the start of the round just to get Tex another ult orb miles away from the ult though. Showstopper not going to be a threat for quite some time. In these scrappy moments. I feel like either of these teams can rely on such a wealth of experience. Regroup called by Loud. Everybody over towards A, but guess what? That's exactly where the stack is. That's a team flash on the two of them. Take that space, but eventually forwards is the move. Making waves now out towards heaven. Yeah, Players not through A main just yet. Still grouped up from Lev. Now, that's not too much damage, or at least potential damage here into the round from left side. I mean, they don't have too much utility to work with, don't even have the guns, but plant online now for Kawazin, heavy control still held on to. It's a very nice setup here for Loud. Yeah. Holding on to Heaven. One person watching Heaven, one person watching Vents, coverage of screens, all ready to play off each other. You can see it's gonna be the same kind of thing where Loud are gonna absolutely deny Heaven control for the retakers. I don't even seek as well to collect a few of these kills if you do want to hunt them down. One enemy remaining. Eco players attempting exits. Oh, they don't get away with it. So, economy flourishing for Loud should have a very, very healthy bonus round heading into the next. Yeah. And should they, <laughs> I mean, should they even be on the bonus round? <laughs> the, the pistol going one way or the other has started some serious momentum. You know, pistol rounds are so important, but especially when you have a, an old cycle like this where Kawanzin and QCK are going to start to get up to big ones. It just matters so much. But Lev have to focus on the here and the now. Star laid down ahead of time here for Lev. Push back maybe yeah. to the main control. Hey. This is the TP. That's the purpose of the nade with the pull on top of it. Good bait. Tui is just forcing out that little trap play from Leviathan. It's a nice idea. But Sadak's called the rotation. Over towards A. This is where Aspas lies in wait. No economy for an operator. But he's just as deadly with a rifle. Getting sneaky with it. Cutting the noise. And like you said, Aspas deadly with the rifle. Here we go. Reclearance of the Trailblazer. Explosive and denied. QCK shut down. A bit of clay pigeon shooting occurring. Now calls being made that they want to try and refight this one up until heaven. But do they have the util for it? 50 seconds time on their side. Could take a bit of a pause and a breather, but entirely in the way of left. In full control of heaven. Rifles just singing bullets, just being slung across. But they can't afford to give away a round like this. This was a 5v2. <sighs> A massive advantage, and Aspas makes sure the less is shut down. There will be no chances for Loud to left. get back in. Spikes in the middle of nowhere, King gets the info. And I it is major that Lev win a round like this. They're hoping at some point that their economy is going to be good enough to get Aspas onto an operator. That was one of the most iconic ways that Loud would previously play this map. Triple face towards <laughs> the end. No chance that Leviathan are letting another round like the pistol slip away from them. A healthy one of that. Keeping this shot. the majority of their guns, yeah. Beautiful. Nasty shot at the beginning. Sets the tone, I think, nope. for the round. Enemy Absolutely. I do like this first gun that Les is using. They want both pistols and they're only up 6-8. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point. It really is. They've got both pistols only up... Eight to seven. Loud have not been struggling a little bit to be able to get rifle rounds on the board. They've had a streak of them towards the end of the first half. Big clearance here. Aspas following up the trailblazer. Uh, two years. What a punish. Hell of a challenge. 
flash though. Safety as he tucks to the back. Look how bold he is. Main. Just re-wide swinging onto this angle. Not scared now that Aspas is dead. Ready to fight Gom. That That's... kill that the calls being made. That I think is a pretty hard read as well from Loud. They know that Aspas loves to get reset back up on aggressive angles over towards A with the dog. Anytime Com is going to use the Trailblazer over towards A, people are going to be looking for Aspas and trying to put him in his place. It's up to two here. Com and King to really put a stop and a stand to all of this. And they deliver. Oh, they deliver with interest. Trying to get the reload off. TP. Dodging, trying to bait this one. And, oh, he can't really dodge that one with the flash into the corner. King is really just collected. Corral pushed back less. As he opened this one up for them. Kawazin, two health, has to plant towards the corner. Call has made a refight. There wasn't a player ready, but Les is there. Eventually, with the trade. One left standing, it's Mazzino. He's walking up, and look at the awareness from Les. Certainly knows best. Mazzino. Forwards now, there's the one! Can't get it! A 4K for Les. Stopping Leviathan in their tracks. Excellent trading from Les. Really incredible stuff, just in the right place at the right time for his team. And Cowensine's utility was also phenomenal. I mean, it helps to isolate King in the corner, but look how blind Com is. He's completely lost on sight. A good try by Mazzino, who's been hyper clutch in this game so far. But whenever Les has a match, He's going to pull out rounds like that every now and then. Aspas on another deep off angle over towards mid. Again, you know that he's been set up by the rest of his team there. So Loud might try to take a timing and some more aggressive map control elsewhere. Balls are steal from Kawazin. The double face is called. Left! They rip it away from them. You could see there that they weren't expecting the third player. Oh! oh! Shot. Okay, that is filthy. Not the highest impact kill, but very flashy. Stylish. Tui's has his ultimate, so this round isn't over. They're in a 2v4 and the spike's down, but it doesn't really matter. If Tui's can find a kill... I mean, Sadak does not need to be fighting for this spike either. Grabs it. Yeah, but now God, there's no God, one God. nearby. Sadak is on the complete opposite side of the map and uh, keeps going deeper. Tuyas doesn't even know if it's safe to plant. I don't understand what's cooking here, but something's on the pot. Potentially a kill. I mean... Now they know where Sadak is, though. They can just take the 3v1 against Tuyas on site. They're going to go the fast. Tex one, sorry. Tex has got his ult. Showstopper, if they choose to really use it and expend it, they can just seal this one up nice and pretty. Tuyas. Back against the wall quite literally now. It's going to be face down. Multitude of targets available, ready and waiting. But there it is. Spammable location towards the back of the map. And Sadak, he's late to the party. Defuse. Tex. Now just sticking it. Trusting his teammates entirely. It's going back and forth, back and forth. Big punish in B main from Leviathan. That really decides the round. There was an interesting attempt there at the 2v4 towards the end, but... The main threat was how they tried to deal with this fight. I really feel like when Les re-swings there, he's expecting to just take a duel against QCK. There's no way he swings that wide trying to delete two players at once. Nice, 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 nice good, good king, good king, good king. I thought he would scrim the nail, I'm not allowed to you. Very tight, though, from Lev in terms of how they took that fight. We've been praising the loud fundamentals a lot from the games that we've seen of them in 2024. But I think, Lev, this match has showcased that they are not just a team of star players. They've actually got the fundamentals together, too. Yeah. It's not just a collection of star players, perhaps I should say. It is actually a team. I think if you said to somebody at the beginning of this match, all right, Lev and Town are going to be one up, over loud and have a really competitive game on split, people would say to you, right, well, Aspas must be dominating then. In order to bring it to loud like that, Aspas must be dominating. And he just isn't. Yeah, not the case. Not it's the case. much more of a team effort here. I do wonder as well, I mean, the complete comparison of that first opening series that they had, maybe a bit of nerves on the stage, potentially. I mean, it looked frantic when we were watching Leo play against 100 Thieves. I mean, are you not, are you not seeing the frantic nature sometimes in oh, these Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, it's peering through, but Lever a lot more disciplined, I think, in the right moments. 
Yeah. The triple face together, making sure that there's nothing going amiss. They're bringing it to a team like Loud that, and we're praising that about this team. You know, they've had a long time to cook and scrim together. Lev should be favored to tie this game up at nine to nine and building up to enormous ultimates on both sides. This next rifle round should be one to savor, unless Loud are able to make something happen with the short <laughs> And my God, when Les is on the board with aim like that, anything is possible. And no way. He's just dunked on Com. Caution to the wind. Just all the way up ramp. Through mid. I just didn't see anything. There was no connection there, but King senses it and hears it and sees the jump spot. The Lev players are all quite spread out from one another, trying to play the full map. And that also means that Loud might be able to create situations where they overwhelm them one by one. It can be pretty dangerous to play spread like this. Especially when you've only got four people and no info to try to cover the map. Fortline Hell, showstopper. Attempt to try and claim this kill, and the claws oh, made to Ryan Refi over towards B main. King! What a timing! That is disgusting! Close to the pillar, they'll eventually spot it out, but King has got this fight down, pit down on top of it. Needs to try and defend this. Seeking a target, there it is! On for the ace. Now listen, shouldn't have been that danger there, but seven bullets left in the chamber. Fired with the shots. He knows that Les is coming hunting. But walk into his territory if you dare. Here. Here. Time. Running so down below. The round isn't even a possibility. What a play from King. <laughs> <laughs> the only question is who's oh, going to Wait, wait, wait. wait. Time. Oh. Oh. There should have been no danger in that. that. Dodgy. There should have that been absolutely dodgy. no danger whatsoever. You are kidding me. <laughs> we, were calling, we were calling the round and we were like, oh, well, where's the ace? Where's the ace? Mate. I mean. He almost got all of them. Yeah. If Asmus didn't have the presence of mind to just get the hell out of there, he might just toss the round. That play, though, by King is excellent because things did look dangerous for Leviathan. But as soon as the breach shot was used, he took the timing to swing through the smoke, caught Cowan Zine with his util out in his hands and picked up two. Really important. We're already into the round here. Familiar scenes. The ram takes the trailblazer, feeling like there could be players right behind us. I'm actually surprised that Lev didn't try to blast pack and showstopper Sadak there. Any time that Tex has Razol online and Sadak's inside his dog, that is a serious possibility. Ram target. Seeker's being used now. This is at the minute really mark. early. Yeah, really early. Just looking to try and re-clear as well, spot where these players might be. Now, most of the Seekers went into mid, so they know there's only really one player's less being pressured heavily. Got to back away. But a call of the cancel by Loud. Look at all the players regrouping now. Reassess the situation. And now it's Sadak's time to play around with the util and the ult that he might have. Seekers popping down a timing here. King side by side, shoulder to shoulder! No way. Sadak won it! There's no way! Get out of here! 40 seconds left. Cut close here, Tex to the corner, traded instantly, Fight less hot on his heels, that is sharpness on display. The sight is theirs, not going to be able to plant this one for heaven, TP in close, three left. players. Really just playing Fight his post plant positioning is not ideal, but it's not the pit to play around. And Sadak's going to be late to try to clean up this round. We saw danger inside the pit previously. The judge, mazina has got a judge walking straight into them. And he's found the crucial target. Less brought down and so does the pit. All the cover removed. The two players left standing. Backs against the wall removed and dropped. Two years there. Yeah, There's that flank timing of Sadak coming in clutch. Holds it down towards main. The jiggle spot seeing that Asmus has dropped down. Asmus! What? Unbelievable! Gira Aspas is spinning around, spray transferring into main. What a moment for Aspas to come alive with the clutch. I'm speechless at that. He hasn't really had those outrageous rounds against his former team yet. But he might just push this over the line. Oh my god. He set his team up. 
to be favoured perhaps here for a 2-0 victory. <laughs> Lev are on the anti-eco. Certified ass pass moment. Well, shut down that attempt. The weaker guns allowed. Not getting the job done. Someone to the side. Showstopper. Claims that the target claims the mark. Hello, still the danger there. Boom, bot from the side. King, in the midst of all of it, pandemonium, he strikes fast and hard there, taking control back towards heaven. One minute, 10 on the clock. How is he? Is he tapped his way deep? Yeah, tap. Looking to see if he could force a reaction out from Leviathan and equalize this player disadvantage. Anytime Les has a rifle, it is possible for Loud. Risks have to be taken. Toxins going still not pressing the advantage, not pushing deep forward. Inside the smoke now playing this one. They give space for the rest of his team for Lev. Try and get themselves in through the main area. Knives popped off by Aspas. Mazzino almost there with the timing. Over the top, top. Okay, Stinger dashing in. The knife's going amiss. It's only got the operator in his hands. Les and Kawazine. Dynamic is the duo. And they brought it 10 to 10. The eco win rate is through the roof this year. It's outrageous. Loud have just flipped the economy on its head, tossed the table, spilt the coins. <laughs> Cowanzine with a stinger. Less coming out with aim. Uh, that is. Less and Sadhak in back to back rounds, basically, have been caught red handed inside these kind of smoke situations and yet still have come out on top. And Less, in particular, 21 for 10. The call being made by Loud. I mean, it feels like they're not even going towards mid B. They don't care. It's a Sodic straight towards the A side now. And away we go. Double Satra, QCK. Good clearance of the util. Doesn't have to worry about elbow. Not with the alpha shock. A little bit delayed. Now the plan. Coming through. But guess what? No control of heaven here for Loud. This postman's going to be played with three. Tucked towards the site again. Really, really deep positions of the main players might be key. Against the eco that Lev have been knocked down to, there shouldn't be that danger. And look at Lev, I mean, they're not even trying. Not even trying for it. I mean, they, they specifically do not want to give ults for loud. Because look, we've got a rifle round coming up. And what have Lev got to work with? I mean, basically nothing. The Cosmic Divide is fairly good to be able to retake potentially. But if loud start getting up to Seekers or you know, worst case scenario, if Kawanzine just mopped everybody up oh, and got a breach ult. Yeah. Lev have to take the safe approach here. And my word, I thought that Aspas 1v2 had set up Leviathan to maybe put Loud to bed. But they will not go quiet. No. <laughs> a timeout called. We know they've got resilience. Now, I've just seen Aspas purchasing the Operator, and I don't remember him having that online at really any other point in the defense. He did a bit earlier. Yeah, did two, round, two, two rounds ago, rounds? two rounds ago he had it, because right. he ended up using the Blade Storm. But for the most part in this defensive half, the economy has been kept kind of in check for Lev. Yeah. And so he's mostly been using the rifle. We'll see whether the Operator can make a large difference. It's mind games at work here between, you know, King and Sadak. Uh, I mean, so far, this, the rounds are being getting called by Loud on this attack side. It's been so heavy towards A most of the time, either finishing A or starting A. Maybe they show some presence towards mid, but I wonder as well, when are they going to go for a bit of mid control? When are they going to go for the B pop? It's always out of the back of their minds. How do you want to allocate your players if you are level on the defense? Where is Aspas going to choose to post up with the operator? He's very often going to take the op over towards A main. And I think Loud are going to be aware of that. They've got stuns down the line. They've got, you know, Trailblazer to try to clear. So many tools. So Aspas instead looking like he's going to take a more unexpected approach towards mid. But to be honest, it doesn't look like Loud are pathing there at all. They've got a stun and a flash ready to take ramp. Just to gain control of it, though. Not going for the blast pack. Instead, just fighting this with the Viper. Now, you've got to be a bit worried here because a Trailblazer can clear you out. It looks like that's what Com's going for. Will need to be broken. 
and is immediately. Played by Nave, Flash as well, Com does he choose to take a peek of it? He's got two players just waiting for him. TP from two E's. Two E's was trying to react into B because they realized the lev was stacked over towards A. Would have been absurd to stick it, but to be honest, it's too easy. He did that earlier on, so I wasn't sure. Now they walk back right into Aspas. No one to deal with the dog. Gonna have this dash active, but it's gonna be clearing him out. Has to reveal himself. Up online is there. Everybody getting out. There. The line of side area here. Going for the B split now. That's all out here. Two players to mid. Two players to B main. They're gonna make it feel like it's a split towards A at the start here. And this has an cool extra back. reason. Oh yeah, they're turning it actually into an A split. Tons and the two is pulling all the way back. This is Where? into Aspas. Aspas has gone exactly. He's here. The call left. is made. Everybody giving up that space because they know that they've given up towards heaven. 25 seconds left. Do you dare push this through? Satchel, stun. It's all connected, but Com still ready and waiting. In through the back. Lovely dodge of this one, and they have slowed this to a crawl. Now the tap, not quite. Yes, still trying to bait it out. So the smoke's there. Kawazin does well to just at least push that back. Dealing with Com. Ten seconds left. Thorn in their sides. Spike Finally, this planted. post plant can get online. Justin's they got so much more to down. deal with here. And Aspas wasn't really able to help because he was opping. It's still going to be difficult for him to find value. Player disadvantage, Cosmic Divide. Can they really seek to try and take this fight forwards? What is the call to be made? If you go all into this one, you're going to have no economy for the next. It's going to be entirely reset. It's such a difficult task, but they want to go for it now. Moving forwards, fault line. Slowing him down, rifles picked up. Out so wide, late. time running down. So damn low, King. An opening, still the wall in the Last face. King sticking his halfway all the way, but now shut down. It's loud up to 12. The neutralization of Aspas Operator was perfect there for Loud in that round. Even though they ended up going into him, the pathing never gave Aspas any opportunity, and he couldn't try to flood in to help Com. In fact, he threw a cloudburst that, to be honest, might have even stopped Com from getting a kill in that spot. And as you said, this is now going to be devastating for Leviathan's economy. They don't have the op to be able to work with, but more than that, King is now going to be forced onto a lower buy with only a judge. Mazzino with a stinger. I mean, take a look at this. The cards are stacked in Loud's favor. The pushes to ascent. No feigning from Loud this time again. Familiar is the approach. Satchel's into the back. Plant down immediately. They're not worried about the anchoring players. I've got your trail. Well, containment has to be played by Lev. The double flank is coming through from both of the duelists. So Sadak is going to have to hold on to that. It's going to take a long time, though, for Lev to get set up. And Kawanzin has a breach ult. Even in the best case scenario, this is going to be tight on the clock for Lev. Have to play so damn fast and lose. Breach shot rolling funder used very early. Maybe a blessing in disguise. Smokes dropped. Paranoia on top of it. Sadak, that caught onto him. And he doesn't have a clue. Tex is there to contain. Players drop down. Through and corners into the side here, into hell is two years. Shorty, jump through, connections all about. This is loud, up to 13, it's inevitable. And there it is, ascent is the goal, and that is where we are heading. It was brutal, it was scrappy. There were mistakes, there were huge plays. At the end of it, loud has come out on top. Managing to recover, managing to push themselves over the line in a way that they couldn't quite unbind. But both of these teams are so close. And on Ascent, it's likely we'll be returning to that loud composition with the Phoenix, with the Breach, with the KO. That will be running through everybody's mind on Leviathan as they seek to close things out. Even more questions that we're going to have potentially <laughs> answered. We play in that moment. All silly moments. Give well, me it. Time for a quick break. When we return, the analysts will get us ready for map number three. You don't want to miss it.